Hi, hello, good morning. Uh, this is Ramesh Kumar Lalkota, Assistant Professor of Botany, MBS Government Arts and Science College, Autonomous, Mahabub Nagar. Uh, yeah. We are discussing the topic photosynthesis in plants. So till now, we saw the structure of chloroplasts, the types of chlorophylls, structure of chlorophyll, difference between chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, the molecular model, uh, models of uh, chlorophylls and the carotenes, and the differences between carotenes and xanthophylls we discussed in our last classes. And also we saw the nature of light and uh, the light harvesting complexes, pigment system one, pigment system two. Mm -hmm. Then we discussed uh, the light reactions, that is uh, cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylations and uh, dark reactions that is uh, c3 cycle and c4 cycle and also differences between c3 and c4 cycles in our last classes okay uh, one more time we will have a quick uh, repetition of uh, yesterday's class in our last class uh, we said that c3 cycle uh, takes place in three steps carboxylation reduction and regeneration in the first step uh, carboxylation step, uh, carbon dioxide is first accepted by RUBP, uh, ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase, uh, which is a 5 carbon compound. Accepting carbon dioxide, it forms a 6 carbon compound immediately, it breaks down into 2, 3 carbon compounds, that is uh, phosphoglyceric acid. Uh, up to here, carboxylation is over, then uh, a reduction reaction uh, before going, uh, before it undergoing uh, a reduction, it uh, first uh, undergoes phosphorylation, gets activated, and then it undergoes a reduction reaction. So, uh, it first uh, the PGA uh, phosphoglyceric acid it undergoes phosphorylation in the presence of phosphoglycerokinase and forms 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid. Here, 12 ATP molecules are consumed, and in the next reaction, this 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid in the presence of uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. It uh, uh, undergoes reduction to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, okay? And this reaction takes place in the presence of triose phosphate dehydrogenase. Uh, and as a result, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate formation takes place. And this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, half of the molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate undergoes isomerization, isomerization forming DHAP, that is dihydroxyestrone phosphate. And... Uh, among the 12 molecules, two molecules of uh, uh, this uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, one molecule, and uh, DHAP, one molecule, they condense and form uh, glucose in cytoplasm. These uh, uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and the uh, DHAP, they diffuse into cytoplasm, they, they condense and form uh, glucose 6 phosphate. Okay, glucose, first of all, fructose 1 6 bisphosphate formation to, takes place. Then, afterwards, immediately, one of the inorganic phosphate, uh, at, uh, the phosphate ion. Uh, gets detached from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate forming fructose 6-phosphate then this fructose 6-phosphate undergoes isomerization resulting in the formation of glucose 6-phosphate and later on formation of glucose takes place in the cytoplasm and the remaining 10 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate they regenerate 5 molecules of ribulose bisphosphate ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate so this is C3 cycle and we we saw C4 cyclers, C4 pathway, uh, C3, there is a difference between uh, uh, the mesophyll and the chloroplast structure of uh, C3 and C4 cycle. Uh, you can observe here the Kranz anatomy is seen in C4 cycle. Uh, what is Kranz anatomy? Uh, C4 plants uh, uh, differ from C3 by having large cells around the vascular bundles, uh, which are called bundle sheet cells. And uh, the leaves uh, which have such anatomy are known as Kranz anatomy. Kranz anatomy is seen in only these uh, C4 plants. It is absent in C3 plants. We will see. In C3 plants, uh, actually in C, uh, C3 plants, the first uh, stable product is a three carbon compound that is PGA. But here, uh, the carbon dioxide, it uh, immediately after it entering into the uh, Mesophyll cells through stromata, it uh, fuses with water, forming bicarbonic acid. 
So bicarbonate ion and H plus ion formation takes place. And this bicarbonate is accepted by PEP phosphoenol pyruvic acid is the primary acceptor of this bicarbonate. Then it converts itself into oxaloastric acid, which is a dicarboxylic acid. Hence, it is also known as dicarboxylic acid cycle. And uh, here, uh, as the first stable product is a four carbon compound, this uh, cycle is also known as C4 cycle. So this oxaloacetic acid undergoes uh, reduction to malic acid by consuming an ADPH in the presence of malic dehydrogenase. And from this uh, mesophyll cell, it enters into bundle sheet cell where this malic acid undergoes oxidative decarboxylation, liberating carbon dioxide, and this carbon dioxide enters into C3 cycle. As usual, all the uh, reactions which takes place in C3 cycle will take place and uh, uh, formation of glucose takes place. That is, carbon dioxide is reduced to glucose through C3 cycle. And malic acid is uh, uh, decarboxylated to pyruvic acid and this pyruvic acid again enters back into the mesophyll cell where it undergoes uh, it uh, uh, undergoes phosphorylation and uh, phosphoenol pyruvic acid is regenerated okay this is c4 cycle and we saw the differences between c3 c4 also uh, today we will see uh, cam uh, what is CAM? Crassulacean acid metabolism. Many succulent plants uh, uh, belonging to the family Crassulaceae, such as uh, Bryophyllum, Sedum, show a formation of organic acid at nights and uh, its a dis uh, disappearance during daytime. This diurnal uh, fluctuation of organic acid content is found in families. Uh, like Agavaceae, Orchidaceae, Portulacaceae, Crassulaceae, Cactaceae, all these uh, plants which show this type of uh, Crassulacean acid metabolism uh, are known as CAM plants. Crassulacean acid metabolism plants. Okay. In CAM plants, during night times, uh, organic acid content of the plant becomes very high, accompanied by decrease in pH of the leaf cells are and decrease in carbohydrates whereas in daytime the acid content decreases pH of the leaf increases and sugars are formed the most abundant acid in CAM plants is malic acid although citric acid and isocitric acid also accumulate in some species CAM plants are succulents uh, with uh, fleshy stems and leaves however certain succulent plants like uh, halophytes do not carry out this type of crassulacean acid metabolism okay so as uh, these uh, cam plants they are xerophytic in nature um, there is a uh, they, their leaves are made up of uh, spongy mesophyll cells containing chloroplasts and vacuoles but uh, no bundle sheet cells surrounding the vascular bundles as in c4 plants uh, CAM, plant, uh, CAM plants, uh, they do not show any Kranz anatomy uh, like the C4 plants. Uh, unlike other plants, uh, in these plants, stomata are closed during the daytime. That is, they are scoto to They are open during nights only. This is an adaptation for reducing the rate of transpiration and minimizing water loss. Okay. So, many of uh, these plants like uh, cacti are adapted to hot, dry, arid climate uh, in cam plants co2 fixation occurs at night because uh, the the stomata are open only during nights no that's why the entry of carbon dioxide takes place during nights itself so the um, co2 fixation occurs at night and uh, organic acid uh, that is malic acid accumulates in the mesophyll cells uh, during uh, daytime uh, this malic acid disappears and the carbohydrates are formed um, now we will see uh, what are the different reactions that takes place uh, in CAM metabolism say during night times uh, first the reserve starch material it undergoes glycolysis uh, resulting in the formation of a pyruvic acid we all know that as a result of glycolysis pyruvic acid formation takes place and this pyruvic acid is converted to phosphoenol pyruvic acid okay so PEP formation takes place 
and this PEP is the primary acceptor of carbon dioxide as same in the case of C4 plants. See, phosphoenol pyruvic acid is the primary acceptor of carbon dioxide which enters during night times through stomata in the presence of PEP carboxylase. And the first stable compound formed is OAA that is oxaloacetic acid which is a dicarboxylic acid and a 4 carbon compound. Okay, so this oxaloacetic acid undergoes reduction and forms malic acid in the presence of malic dehydrogenase. Here, one NADPH is used up and uh, NADPH is converted to NAD, NADP and uh, uh, OA is converted to malic acid or reduced to malic acid. This malic acid is stored in the vacuole. The whole night, the malic acid is stored in the vacuole. And uh, uh, during the daytimes, the, uh, the malic acid diffuses out from the vacuole and there it undergoes uh, decarboxylation reaction, oxidative decarboxylation reaction. Here, in this reaction, carbon dioxide is uh, released and this carbon dioxide enters into C3 cycle. See here, C4 cycle also took place, C3 cycle also taking place. Okay, so this uh, malic acid it liberates carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide enters into c3 cycle and malic acid is again converted to pyruvic acid which later on converted to starch okay. so uh, the entered carbon dioxide into c3 cycle is uh, reduced to glucose in the cytoplasm this is cam metabolism okay so here you can see both uh, C C4 and C3 cycles are taking place. And uh, in CAM plants uh, like uh, C4 plants, uh, they contain Hatch-Slack pathway and Kelvin cycle. And in C4 plants, uh, both the cycles are spatially separated. That is uh, what happened earlier in C4 plants. Just we will have a glance. See here. They are spatially separated. That is, the C4 plants occurred in mesophyll cells and C3 cycle occurred in bundle sheet cells. In the same way, here they are uh, here uh, they are not spatially separated, but they are separated by time. That is, uh, during uh, night time, C, uh, C4 cycle takes place, and uh, during daytime, C3 cycle takes place. Okay, so. In CA implants, both cycles occur in the mesophyll cells, but they are separated by time. Uh, yeah, this is about CAM metabolism. And the last topic of uh, photosynthesis is photorespiration. We will see what is photorespiration. In plants, uh, respiration occurs in light as well in darkness. It was believed that only kind of respiration, namely dark respiration occurs in plants and rate of respiration in light is same as that of the rate of respiration in dark. This photorespiration was first observed by uh, Decker in uh, 1959 in a uh, uh, tobacco, uh, tobacco plant. Uh, this uh, photorespiration was first identified by the Decker. Okay. Uh, then, uh, what happened here, uh, when such uh, plants are eliminated with carbon dioxide, uh, uh, eliminated both the carbon dioxide evolution and oxygen uptake are uh, stimulated and thus takes place simultaneously with photosynthesis. Okay, so here, same, same as the, uh, as that of a normal uh, respiration, intake of, intake of oxygen and the release of carbon dioxide takes place and this process takes place in the presence of light so it is known as photorespiration okay so this photorespiration uh, we will see mechanism of the photorespiration and uh, one more thing is that this uh, photorespiration is observed only in c3 plants it is not observed in c4 plants okay uh, so um, here uh, RUBP, the enzyme, Rubisco, um, ribulose, bisphosphate, 
carboxylase oxygenase drupis coenzyme when concentration of uh, carbon dioxide is more and availability of oxygen is less then it follows the path of c3 cycle but if the concentration of oxygen is more and concentration of uh, carbon dioxide is less then this rubisco uh, will go for oxygen instead of carbon dioxide then instead of forming uh, two pga molecules it forms a pga molecule and a phosphoglycolic acid molecule okay so what happens in the presence of light and if the concentration of oxygen is more the rubisco it has affinity towards oxygen only it won't go for carbon dioxide if it goes for carbon dioxide then the form the resulting uh, uh, products which are formed are two pga molecules we already saw that in c3 cycle okay but if it goes for oxygen then one pga molecule and one phosphoglycolic acid molecule formation takes place immediately this phosphoglycolic acid molecule undergoes dephosphorylation forming a glycolic acid okay so uh, this uh, glycolic acid is the primary substrate for photorespiration glycolic acid which is a two carbon compound so this pho photorespiration is also known as c2 cycle c2 cycle because the first formed product is glycolic acid which is a two carbon compound so it is known as c2 cycle it is synthesized in green leaves in light but not in the dark when oxygen concentration in the external atmosphere increases there is an increase in glycolic acid in an illuminated leaf when co2 concentration is increased there is reduction in the formation of glycolic acid thus high concentration of uh, o2 and low concentration of co2 in the atmosphere favor formation of glycolic acid and hence photorespiration then what happens here this photorespiration uh, takes place in the three organelles that is chloroplast peroxisome and mitochondria huh? chloroplast and peroxisome are closely associated with each other okay so this chloroplast in chloroplast this uh, fixation of oxygen uh, by rubisco has been uh, by rubp in the presence of Rus uh, rubisco has been uh, resulted in the formation of a pga and a phosphoglycolic uh, acid uh, which later on formed glycolic acid which is a substrate for photorespiration now this glycolic acid it enters into peroxisome glycolic acid enters into peroxisome which immediately undergoes oxidation resulting in the formation of uh, glyoxolic acid and uh, uh, h2o2 h2o2 is a uh, very uh, dangerous so immediately in the presence of catalase it is it's broke it is it's, uh, it's break down into h2o and oxygen okay and uh, uh, this glyoxylic acid undergoes transamination transamination a uh, gly uh, glyoxylic acid uh, in the presence of glutamic acid it undergoes transamination resulting in the formation of a glycine and alpha ketoglutaric acid here the uh, amino group transfers from uh, glutamic acid to glyoxylic acid converting it into glycine now this glycine it enters into mitochondria where two molecules of this glycine condense to form serine three a three carbon compound it, it, it is also an amino acid glycine is also an two carbon amino acid and serine also a three carbon amino acid so two molecules of glycine they condense and form a three molecule uh, three carbon uh, serine here carbon dioxide is released decarboxylation reaction takes place in the presence of carboxylase enzyme c carbon dioxide is released oxygen is observed carbon dioxide is released so this is similar to that of respiration so we call it as photorespiration here carbon dioxide is released okay so and again uh, uh, this uh, amino uh, ammonia which is released uh, 
from the glycine that is two molecules of glycine are condensed you no know? so one molecule of ammonia one molecule of carbon dioxide are releases so this am uh, ammonia is uh, utilized in various transamination reactions so now this serine enters uh, back into the peroxisome where it, un uh, it undergoes again a transamination reaction in the presence of uh, alpha ketoglutaric acid and uh, uh, hydroxypyruvic acid is formed by transamination of serine okay so this hydroxypyruvic acid which is a three carbon compound it uh, uh, undergoes reduction by making use of one nadh and uh, nadh plus h plus and uh, converts itself into glyceric acid this glyceric acid enters back into the chloroplast glyceric acid undergoes phosphorylation by making use of one more atp and uh, resultant formation is phosphoglyceric acid that is two molecules of phosphoglyceric acid see here one molecule of phosphoglyceric acid one molecule of phosphoglyceric acid that is this two phosphoglycolic uh, glycol uh, acid undergoes all these reactions and form ultimately into pga only okay but if availability of carbon dioxide is there then directly pga formation takes place but if oxygen is present whole reactions have to carry on okay and uh, unnecessary use of atp and nadph huh? uh, waste of energy so photorespiration is a loss of energy due to this photorespiration there will be a loss of energy okay so this is photorespiration so these plants are grouped as uh, plants with photorespiration and plants without photorespiration in c3 plants photorespiration is present and in c4 plants photorespiration is absent and then biological significance of photorespiration is not clearly understood according to some workers it is a wasteful process since it removes uh, photosynthetically fixed as CO2. See, you, you can see uh, carbon dioxide is released <coughs> uh, from uh, chlorophyll cells and decreases plant productivity. But uh, other experts uh, consider it as a means of uh, removing excess ATP and NADH. So see, use of making use of ATP and NADH. It, uh, uh, produced at a high light in synthesis, so they do not cause damage to pigments of chloroplasts at a high light levels. Okay. This is all about you know, photorespiration. Then the last topic is factors affecting photosynthesis. Here we have to discuss about concept of lim limiting factors. Uh, for a long time, physiologists studied the influence of uh, one factor at, uh, uh, at a time on photosynthesis. The effect of several factors such as light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, temperature, etc., was studied independently without reference to other factors. Uh, for each factor, minimum, optimum, and maximum values are established. The optimum value is not fixed and it varies according to a set of conditions. And it was uh, not realized that several factors operate simultaneously and interact with each other. For the first time, F. F. Blackman proposed the law for limiting factors. Hmm. He pointed out the uh, necessity of uh, taking into account the influence of other factors also when the influence of a particular factor is examined. So, according to uh, F. F. Blackman, uh, when a process is controlled by several factors, the rate of the process is limited by the minimum factor. This is known as law of uh, law of minimum law of limiting factors. Okay, if a chemical process is affected by more than one factor, then its rate will be determined by the factor which is nearest to its minimal value. Okay, uh, then now uh, we will see what are the factors that affect uh, the photosynthesis rate of photosynthesis first one is light uh, light is one of the most important factors affecting photo photosynthesis uh, in nature sunlight is the chief source of energy but artificial lights are also effective the effect of the light and photosynthesis depends upon 
intensity, quality, as well as the duration of light. We will see intensity of light. Uh, some marine algae carry out photosynthesis in low light intensity equivalent to that of the moonlight. In shade plants, uh, even one by tenth of the day, uh, light intensity is uh, sufficient for maximum rate of photosynthesis. High light in intensity may inhibit the photosynthesis. Uh, and this phenomenon is known as solarization. Uh, and uh, due to photooxidation, chlorophyll is also bleached and enzymes are inactivated. So, uh, in a high light in intensity, uh, it has a retrogressive effect over photosynthesis. Quality of light. So, scattering uh, light caused by uh, water vapor, dust, carbon dioxide and uh, ozone. As a, okay, the exposure to sunlight depends on elevation, time of the day, altitude and other factors. Uh, about 50% of this radiation belongs to infrared region and 5% uh, ultraviolet region. So, about uh, mm, then, so the remaining the radiation energy of uh, 400 joules uh, per meter square per second, which lies in between 400 to 700 nanometer, constitutes uh, the visible spectrum and it is capable of causing photosynthesis. And this radiant energy is called. Photosynthetic, uh, photosynthetically active radiation. Okay, the radiant energy is called photosynthetically active radiation and uh, the visible spectrum consisting of uh, uh, VGR colors is uh, used for this photosynthesis. The, and the maximum photosynthesis occurs in red light followed by blue light and the minimum occurs in green light. So this is the quality of light and duration of light. Photosynthesis may sustain for long period of uninterrupted light and the photosynthesis is greater in plants exposed to longer durations. And carbon dioxide, the next one is carbon dioxide. We will see how it affects. Under normal conditions, an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide causes an increase in photosynthesis. Uh, the increase is more rapid up to 1% of carbon dioxide concentration. And beyond this level, it slows down due to closure of stomata. Because it will, it will become, it will become as poison uh, to the mesophyll cells if the concentration of carbon dioxide is more. Okay, the CO2 concentration at which uh, photosynthetic fixation just balances uh, respiratory loss is called CO2 compensation point. In other words, volume of CO2 consumed in photosynthesis is equal to the volume of CO2 liberated in photorespiration. So there is no net gain or loss of CO2. This concentration is called as CO2 compensation point at which photosynthesis is exactly compensated by CO2 liberated in respiration. And at a CO2 compensation point, net photosynthesis is zero. CO2 compensation point is an index of the rate of photorespiration. In C3 plants, photorespiration is high, that is 50 to 150 parts per million. On, uh, on the other hand, in C4 plants where photorespiration is almost absent, CO2 compensation point is a 0 to 10 ppm. And the last one is temperature. Temperature, the effect of temperature and photosynthesis depends upon the species and environmental conditions under which the plant is growing. Uh, desert plants can uh, carry on photosynthesis at 50 degrees centigrade. In most uh, plants, the photosynthesis occurs uh, with, uh, uh, within the range of uh, 15 to 35 degrees centigrade. And C4 plants, uh, uh, the optimum temperature will be 30 to 40 degrees. And C3 plants, 15 to 25 degrees centigrade. Mm. So, oh, uh, if... Uh, all the other factors are not limiting. Uh, the rate of uh, the process uh, will double for every 10 degrees rise of temperature until an optimum is reached. Okay. Then the oxygen. Oxygen is a, a byproduct of photosynthesis. Uh, but high oxygen concentration inhibits photosynthesis. This inhibition of photosynthesis by high 
oxygen concentration in C3 plants and the algae is called Warburg effect. So photosynthesis uh, shows a higher rate of uh, oxygen concentration is low. Okay, photosynthesis uh, shows a higher rate if oxygen concentration is low. Even the normal oxygen concentration of 21% of uh, atmosphere inhibits photosynthesis in C3 plants. But in C4 plants, oxygen concentration does not affect photosynthesis since photorespiration is absent. Okay, the last one, water. Water is uh, one of the raw materials required for photosynthesis. However, the amount of water needed by a plant is very small. So, water can hardly be a limiting factor. The effect of uh, water is indirect on the rate of photosynthesis. A water deficiency may cause closure of stomata and, the, and this will result in decrease of absorption of carbon dioxide. Uh, so water deficit uh, leads to decrease in turgor and dehydration of uh, protoplasm which will affect the photosynthesis. So this is about our photosynthesis. So thank you, thank you very much. Hope you understood all the topics. Thank you.